South Africa's genocide case against Israel started on Thursday at the International Court of Justice in The Hague. The imprisonment of two Polish PIS politicians is escalating a struggle between the new government and the old over the country's public media. Turkey, Bulgaria and Romania signed an agreement on Thursday for collaborative demining efforts in the Black Sea. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was in the capital of Estonia on Thursday for meetings with the country's leaders on the second day of a trip through the Baltic states. Ukraine is hoping to speed up the domestic production of ammunition and weapons and is seeking joint projects with foreign governments. Russia can be stopped, he says, but Kyiv is in high need of more air defense systems. Zelensky has assured Russia is experiencing a missile and ammunition deficit and has lost a large part of its experienced forces. But the Russian attacks do not stop. Missile airstrikes have intensified in recent weeks. On Wednesday night, two Russian missiles struck a hotel in Kharkiv, killing 11 people. Residential homes and vehicles were also severely damaged. South Africa's genocide case against Israel started on Thursday at the International Court of Justice in The Hague. South Africa is alleging Israel has engaged in genocidal acts in Gaza during the war against Hamas. It is demanding the court to approve of an interim measure that would stop combat operations in Gaza. It is also asking Israel to offer reparations. According to South Africa, Israel would have violated its obligations under the 1948 Genocide Convention. Countries such as Iran, Turkey, Colombia and Brazil have supported South Africa's case. Israel's government denounced the genocide claim. The foreign ministry said South Africa's case lacks a legal foundation and constitutes a despicable and contemptuous exploitation of the court. Israel, which has a history of ignoring international tribunals, has agreed to defend itself in front of the 15 elected judges. More than 22,000 Palestinians, most of them women and children, have been killed in Israeli strikes since the beginning of the conflict, according to Gaza's health ministry. Everyone, this way, please. Footage released by the Associated Press shows dozens of people running in a panic in the aftermath of a strike in which at least 20 people were killed when it hit a two-story building in the central Gaza city of Deir al-Bala was hit on Wednesday near the Al-Aqsa hospital according to hospital officials. IDF commanders met in the Gaza Strip. In Gaza, kilometer merubash, you don't know where to go and to get rid of it. אין דבר כזה. אחרי מה שעשיתם, לא קיים דבר כזה. אחרי מה שעשיתם, אין כפר בלבנון, אין שסם בלבנון שאתם לא יכולים להיכנס ולפרק אותו. אנחנו נשים אתכם במקומות שצריך, אתם תעשו שם את מה שצריך. Meanwhile, Osama Hamdan, a senior Hamas official, praised South Africa's genocide case against Israel on Wednesday during a press conference in Beirut. The legal battle opens Thursday at the United Nations top court. Palestinians in the West Bank gathered in Nelson Mandela Square to thank South Africa for filing the controversial case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Train drivers in Germany have announced a three-day strike over poor working conditions and low pay. 80% of trains will not be running between Wednesday and Friday. The German train union is threatening to continue striking unless an offer is made. We have to make the job attractive, that the people come to us, that they also stay. Many go too quickly. And that's why it's necessary. We have to do something. The Bahnvorstand has no ideas. Der macht nichts. 
According to local media, a recently published report shows that Deutsche Bahn board members will receive 5 million euros worth of bonuses for 2022, despite train delays being at an all-time high. Germany is currently ranking eighth for the amount of strikes in Europe, but experts anticipate an increase in 2024. However, to catch up with France, Germany would need to strike five times more than it did in 2021. Travellers unaware of the strikes wandered around main train stations looking for alternative routes. Experts are concerned that supply chains may be hit by these strikes, with cargo train drivers also joining in. It's not just train drivers who are unhappy, but German farmers have been blocking roads with their tractors this week. It poses the question, will the government of Europe's biggest economy be feeling the pressure yet? Liv Stroud in Berlin for Euronews. The imprisonment of two Polish lawmakers from the ousted PIS party is escalating an already bitter struggle between the new government led by Donald Tusk and the previous ruling party, which oversaw an illiberal takeover of Poland's institutions before its defeat in October's election. Ludzie właśnie dowiedzieli się, że minister Sienkiewicz działa niezgodnie z prawem. Jego uchwała, jego decyzje zostały wprost rozjechane przez sąd. Ludzie to widzą. Bardzo ważne jest to, żeby Polska rządzący, ale też Europa zobaczyła, że nie ma zgody polskiego społeczeństwa na nadautorytarne działania, metody, które wprowadza Tusk w Polsce. NGOs and experts point out that public media in Poland, where heads of news are political appointments, is a big factor when it comes to public perception. In recent years, public media became a mouthpiece for the governing majority on an unprecedented scale and that really needed a change. What is doubtful, however, is the legal way the changes were introduced in Polish constitutional order. It is not the minister, it is not a politician in charge of appointing heads of the public media. A new public television team was created in December with the aim of creating a new media with improved journalistic standards. But the legality of the change has been questioned and in some cases access to TV infrastructure has been blocked. Potrzebne jest robienie normalnego programu informacyjnego. Chcemy bardzo, żeby to był program po prostu obiektywny który pokazuje rację wszystkich stron, a, a, a nie jest y, skoncentrowany tylko i wyłącznie na y, krytykowaniu jednych i na wychwalaniu y, kogoś innego. PIS supporters have protested outside government against the changes being made to the media landscape, but Tusk's government is preparing to make other changes too. Jesteśmy w trakcie uchwalania budżetu na, na ten rok i to jest na pewno sprawa pilna. Są takie kwestie jak chociażby sprawa podwyżek dla, dla nauczycieli, kwestia ustabilizowania sytuacji w mediach, które zostały zagarnięte też przez Prawo i Sprawiedliwość. Voices of public media are still divided and this conflict will certainly find its end in the court. Meanwhile, some of the newsrooms of the public television, like the one behind me, remain closed. Magdalena Hanownik for Euronews from Warsaw. The UN Security Council adopted a new maritime security resolution on Wednesday, condemning Houthi attacks on ships crossing the Red Sea and demanding they stop with immediate effect. Algeria, China, Mozambique and Russia abstained. US Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said the attacks were an economic threat. Houthi rebels first attacked the Israel-linked Galaxy leadership on the 19th of November and took its crew hostage. Many more assaults in the shipping lane vital to world trade have taken place since then. The defacing of a religious icon featuring an image of Joseph Stalin has provoked an angry response in Georgia. A crowd vented their anger outside the house of a woman who had thrown paint over the artwork in a cathedral in the capital, Tbilisi. The woman posted a video online of the damaged icon. Stalin remains a deeply divisive figure in the country, with many saying the religious panel boosts support for the former Soviet dictator who was born in Georgia, but he is still revered by others 
members, mainly those who identify with Russian culture. The panel has since been cleaned and placed under police surveillance. Turkey, Bulgaria and Romania signed an agreement on Thursday for enhanced collaborative maritime demining efforts. This was announced at a press conference by the Turkish Defense Minister. Defense officials from the three NATO allies, Turkish Minister Guler, Romanian Minister Tilvar and Bulgarian Deputy Minister Saprianov, met in Istanbul on Thursday. Agreement comes after Ankara denied access to UK-donated minesweepers for Ukraine in the Black Sea last week. In February 2022, amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Turkey enacted the 1936 Montrox Convention to prevent Russian or Ukrainian ships from passing through the Bosporus and Dardanelles Straits and asked countries outside the Black Sea not to send warships. Moscow and Kyiv exchanged accusations of responsibility for the mines adrift in the Black Sea. Face masks are now mandatory in hospitals and health centers around Spain as the country experiences a surge in flu, COVID and other respiratory illnesses. The government's decision, which comes six months after the use of masks were completely abolished, has been opposed by some regional administrations, such as Andalusia. But Spain's new health minister, Monica Garcia, overruled their objections and sought to present the move as a, quote, common sense measure to protect vulnerable people and health workers.